This is video podcast 33 from learningradiology.com, Umbilical Catheters. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. The topics of this podcast are umbilical, arterial, and venous catheters, their normal anatomy and physiology, their uses, and examples of aberrant positioning. The normal fetal circulation begins at the umbilical vein, then blood enters the ductus venosus, the inferior vena cava, the right atrium, crosses the patent foramen ovale into the left atrium, into the left ventricle, into the systemic circulation via the aorta, and then back to the placenta via the umbilical arteries. Umbilical venous catheters are used for fluid and medication administration to draw blood samples. Although they can remain for up to 14 days, they very frequently stay in place for as long as 28 days. Umbilical venous catheters begin at the umbilical vein. They then extend slightly to the right as they join the left branch of the portal vein. They enter the ductus venosus, then the inferior vena cava. This is the tip of an umbilical venous catheter adjacent to the T9 vertebral body, which corresponds roughly in the diagram to the position that's shown here. There are numerous complications to umbilical venous catheters, among which are pericardial effusion or cardiac tamponade, cardiac arrhythmias, mechanical occlusion of the catheter, which is the most common complication, and the most common site of malpositioning of the catheter in the portal vein, which can rarely lead to portal vein thrombosis and necrotizing enterocolitis. Umbilical artery catheters are used less frequently than umbilical venous catheters. They're used for active blood pressure monitoring and to monitor arterial blood gases in kitties with hyaline membrane disease. They can remain for up to five to seven days. And umbilical artery catheters are a known risk factor for intracerebral hemorrhage, the cause of which is not entirely known. Their relationship with necrotizing enterocolitis is controversial. The course of umbilical artery catheters is through the umbilical arteries, down slightly into the internal iliac arteries, then up the descending aorta into the thoracic aorta. This is the tip of an umbilical artery catheter at the level of T7, which corresponds roughly to the point shown on the diagram, except it would be behind the heart. Complications of umbilical artery catheters include vessel perforation, air embolism, hemorrhage, thrombosis, infection, vasospasm, necrotizing enterocolitis, and transection of the catheter. There are two potential positions for umbilical arterial catheters. One is the high position, sometimes called the high line. The second is the low position, sometimes called the low line. The high position has a lower incidence of complications and it is more widely used. The high position has the tip of the umbilical artery catheter at the level of T7 to T9. This is above the celiac axis, which is at T12. It's also above the superior mesenteric artery, which is at about T12 to L1, and the renal arteries at L1. It is, as I said, associated with fewer complications. Essentially, the position here is above the diaphragm. The low position for an umbilical artery catheter is at the level of about L3 to L4. That's above the aortic bifurcation, which is at the level of L4 to L5, and below the level of the renals, which is about the level of L1, and the inferior mesenteric artery, which arises from L3 to L4. Essentially, this low position for umbilical arterial catheters is above the bifurcation. To review, both the umbilical arterial catheter and the umbilical venous catheter are usually above the diaphragm. The umbilical arterial catheter is usually between the levels of T7 and T9, 
The umbilical venous catheter should be in the inferior vena cava as it enters the right atrium, which is approximately the level of T8, T9. And a double lumen catheter is usually, but not always, the umbilical venous catheter and depends upon what is used at each local institution. So here's a handy rhyme to remember the correct positioning for the umbilical arterial catheter. T6, better fix. T7, simply heaven. T8 is great. T9 is fine. T10, try again. That's not original to me. Here are some examples of malpositioning of umbilical arterial or umbilical venous catheters. Here's a series of diagrams from an article which appeared many years ago and which I can't find the original reference to, but I thank the individuals who first published these. The top four are umbilical venous catheters that are not in correct position. This catheter has its tip in an intrahepatic branch of the portal vein. This catheter has its tip in the superior mesenteric vein. This catheter has its tip coiled in the right atrium. This catheter has its tip extending through the intraatrial septum into the left atrium. These four diagrams on the bottom show positions of umbilical artery catheters that are not in correct position. This umbilical arterial catheter is in the celiac, renal, or superior mesenteric artery. This catheter is in the external iliac artery. This catheter tip is in the brachiocephalic or carotid arteries. And this catheter tip is in the ascending aorta. It could enter the left ventricle. The tip of this umbilical venous catheter is extending into the left atrium. It could be extending into a pulmonary vein, but in either case, it's in an anomalous position and should be withdrawn. It's important to recognize that the umbilical venous catheter enters the umbilicus and then heads in a more or less straight course upward, whereas the umbilical arterial catheter first dips down into the internal iliac artery and then begins its upward course through the aorta. This is an example of an umbilical venous catheter whose tip extends into the region of the left subclavian vein. Here's an example of an umbilical artery catheter, which is in a gluteal artery. Most often, the catheter goes into the superior gluteal artery because of its size. Here's an example of an umbilical venous catheter, which extends and loops in a portal vein in the liver. This is an example of an umbilical arterial catheter which extends to the origin of the left subclavian artery. This is an example of an umbilical venous catheter which extends into the splenic vein. Here's another umbilical venous catheter. This one extends out into a left pulmonary vein. This is an example of an umbilical venous catheter that extends to the right into a portal vein. This grid is to help you remember the names of the original arteries and veins and what they become later in adult life. The umbilical vein becomes the ligamentum teres. The umbilical arteries become the medial umbilical ligaments. The ductus venosus becomes the ligamentum venosum, and the ductus arteriosus becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. It's time for the mini quiz. Get ready to pause your computer or MP3 player. Where is the tip of this umbilical venous catheter? Well, the catheter extends up the vena cava into the right atrium, across the inner atrial septum, into the left atrium, and then winds up in the left ventricle.